right right here this so the, the there's representation of all of the right wing chuds all of them this, so this is this is you this is this is who you are representing Both uh, hide the fact that I was part indigenous. I can hide the part that I'm a little bit bi. Just a little hint. I can I can hide those things. I don't have to be known for those things in society. I can just basically be like, oh yeah, I'm white and I'm straight. Clean mostly, up your room. mostly, mostly, ma- majorityly. Yeah, mostly, mostly straight. Mo- like yeah, I mean like you know, eighty, eighty-five. Depending on the person. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of people I know who are part, uh, I have lived as part of uh, visible communities uh, their entire lives, people who are othered, people who have experienced uh, racism uh, on a regular basis, people who have experienced homophobia on a regular basis, transphobia on a regular basis, anti Semitism on a regular basis, uh, anti Asian racism on a regular basis. There's a lot of people who live with that every single day of their lives. And for a lot of people, X Men probably resonated with them at least uh, that's kind of the outpouring of uh, love that you see from a lot of specifically the LGBTQ plus community because I think that specific story if you're someone who's had to basically as it's called live in the closet a lot of your life you've had to either deny parts of who you are or you've had to deny the fact that you might have same sex attractions or uh, to do so either to survive or to not be ostracized from your family to not be ostracized from your friend group not be ostracized from your workplace not be ostracized in general from society writ large you probably know what that's like and the same thing is uh, quite a beautiful metaphor in the mutants in in the world of the x-men there are humans and there are mutants and mutants have superpowers some of those superpowers are incredible Uh, they are those uh, like storm for example she can control the very elements weather itself almost like a god Uh, that's certainly an incredible superpower to have but other people their mutations sometimes can hinder their ability to uh, exist in society like everyone else but there are some mutants who can hide it some mutants have the ability actually to shape shift and so they can actually uh, blend into society as smoothly as they want they can craft their own uh, version uh, of how society treats them based on their ability to morph into other uh, you know personas characters all that kind of stuff and so the idea being that like hey there's a lot of people who hate all these people for being different a majority hates a minority and they they want to attack them and they want to use systemic structures to be able to capture them imprison them kidnap them and kill them ultimately um that that whole thing it's you can you can see why and the the whole reason i'm saying this is is because like the x-men i'm sorry to say did not become woke always has been from its very conception you can speak to a lot of the 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 artists the writers throughout history who have uh, contributed towards the x-men canon and uh, it's often been a pretty consistent theme that goes on in the series um there's been a lot of adaptations uh, personally, for me, my favorite was the X-Men 1997 cartoon, and it's back, and it's glorious. I watched the pilot uh, yesterday. No spoilers. Don't worry. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but it's fantastic. Not only is the art direction, the art style, all credit go to the incredible team that worked on it, the artists who were actually behind every single individually drawn frame that you see. Uh, it's absolutely spellbinding to, to, to watch all, all of the different fusion of both modern technology and mediums with traditional uh, hand-drawn animated cells. I hope they were all well compensated. I'm probably going to get uh, in a lot of trouble with someone like, oh, yeah, that they were treated terribly lines please don't don't promote uh, promote or endorse this product oh my gosh there is no one in here like me and i think that is ultimately what x-men is trying to get at and so then i went into the desert eh, for about two weeks came up with the entire first season let's talk about the latest example of a corporate creative letting down the fan base that funds their job so as you guys may be aware there is a new animated x-men series coming to disney plus titled x-men 97. as you can probably tell by the title it's steeped in nostalgia and the official synopsis of the show reads quote x-men 97 revisits the iconic era of the 1990s as the x-men a band of mutants who use their uncanny gifts to protect a world that hates and fears them are challenged like never before, forced to face a dangerous and unexpected new future. So if you are a fan of the X-Men franchise who's really tired of all of the political propaganda and messaging that's in entertainment nowadays, perhaps there's a chance that you looked at X-Men 97 thinking, wow, maybe this is a symbol that Disney is finally doing things right. Because I mean, as the synopsis and the title of the show X-Men 97 kind of allude to, this whole thing is steeped in nostalgia. And I don't know if you guys were around in the 90s, but let me tell you, in the 90s, 
90s TV shows and movies, they were actually meant to entertain, not lecture audience. Oh, and then everything changed. That's true. I'm hearing the same thing about video games now. The problem with video games is that they went woke. Now they're all political. Got all these messages. Modern day California shit, you know? Current day pronouns, that kind of shit. Never used to be this way, you know? Video games, there weren't lessons about the military industrial complex, you know, capitalism, uh, inadequacies, tyranny, dictatorships, fascism, fascism. No video games that really lectured you about the fascists are bad. You should probably go attack the fascists. Not a lot of, lot of, not a lot of video games center around that theme. So I'm sure there are people out there who are looking at X-Men 97 thinking, finally, we can ignore all this woke stuff, get back to the source material and just have some good old mutant fun. But unfortunately, no, it was not meant to be. From everything we've seen so far, it looks like X-Men 97 is going to be exactly as woke as what we've now come to expect from Disney. For instance, See, like, I've seen this happening a lot lately where all of a sudden it's like, you know, there's the Starship Troopers discourse where it's like, yeah, did you, did you, okay, you, you thought it was just about a bunch of neat sounds and explosions. And now there's the X-Men discourse. And it's like, again, did you, did you think it was just cool powers and explosions? People who just can ignite themselves on fire, shoot laser beams from their eyes. Even that one there, Cyclops is a character. You, you can understand the conflict in that he, unlike some of the other mutants, cannot perpetually hide. He cannot always be not known for being a mutant. He's He's got to wear the ruby glasses so that the, the laser beams don't consistently fire. Even though, in theory, wouldn't they always just be firing, but like a, at a centimeter? Because it almost looks painful sometimes, you know, when he has to release the lasers where he's like, ah! So wouldn't that always just be happening, though? Wouldn't he just be sitting there with his glasses on, but he'd be like, ah! You know, kind of thing. I, I don't know. I'm just reading too much into it. But yeah, that even that in and of itself, right? Uh, that That's what makes sometimes uh, the life of, say, a character like Beast, who always looks like Beast, and outwardly, that's just the way his character looks. There's going to be a lot of other people who are like, my god, that's a monster! You know, when, when the X-Men try to, you know, dress up in their fancy yellow costume, costumes and all that and walk around like some people might notice them right away but if they're they're wearing civilian clothing you know if uh, wolverine's got the, the jacket on and everything then like most people aren't going to be like oh okay well those are those are mutants but when they find out that they hate them all of a sudden it's almost like you know uh say lgbtq plus people you might not know instantaneously that someone is and then when you find that out if you're like oh so you're a degenerate oh you're one of those people since we recently had this character update from the fan account uh, X Men, his eyes can absorb what he admits. Ah, okay. I'm 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 excited for multiple corrections on all things X Men. By the way, you you y'all get me into the deeper lore. Update on X. This post, which was a red flag to fans everywhere, read Morph's characterization in X Men '97. This is a lighter take on the character who is non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with Wolverine, the character's past was- <laughs> She just did the thing I was talking about. As soon as you hear, you find out someone might be slightly different than you. It's like, different, different, ah, uh, <laughs> mutants. <laughs> Mr. Sinister, the show's villain, could also come into play. And what's interesting is that even though this post describes more for the character as non-binary, uh, the attached image very clearly shows a male. And just, I mean, the idea that they would have a non-binary character in this show, obviously a lot of people who maybe before this had been looking forward to the series were let down. As one exasperated user wrote, so, I mean, again, this is where all the biological essentialism goes to die, because if you're a man, by virtue of having a penis, if it's penis maketh the man, you know, not manners, not manners, no, they, they lied to you, it's not manners maketh man, it's penis maketh man, all right? So, without penis, there is no man. Yes, if you lose your penis for whatever reason, you are no longer a man, you are something else. If there's a character called Morph, who is a shapeshifter, and his superpower, or their superpower, as I say in this series, their superpower is the ability to change everything about their body physically. They can grow breasts, they can lose their penis, they can all of a sudden have a vagina. All, all of that is capable when you have that superpower. But you're saying that they still remain a man, no matter what. Even if they have a functional womb for a little while, they're still a man interesting i mean i didn't know this was the road that all of you wanted to go down if, if morph was your hill to die on so be it um but then you know you're finally accepting then maybe 
It's not penis that maketh the man. That you you could still be a man without a penis. Oh yeah. <laughs> Getting a lot of a lot of raids today. Awesome time to raid in. <laughs> I hope I hope everyone, you know sometimes when you hit the raid button and then it cuts to the next stream and then all of a sudden there's a couple seconds where you get to watch the stream before the raid hits. I hope it just cut in right at that moment. Right right at that exact opportune time it would have been like and maybe it's not penis that maketh the man. First time here, uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much the show. <laughs> uh, Hild the Beast, Hild the Beast, thank you for the raid. Everyone go to twitch.tv slash Hild underscore Beast. Go give a follow back. Uh, we're talking about X-Men, talking about uh, how great the new return of X-Men is. And I'm, I'm going to give all of you uh, a moment of just utter and complete nostalgic uh, epicness by playing it. Uh, and I'm also going to show you a very, very funny comedian uh, who uh, explains why. So the reason I'm... I'm opening and reopening uh, the X-Men discourse. A, it's funny because it's just so silly. B, it's actually something where they, and by they I mean like the right, has painted themselves into a pretty awkward corner because right now they're all screaming, Morph is he him! Morph is a man! Try, stop trying to change Morph and take Morph away! And, and it was like, okay, well, I mean like, th if this is your argument, then you're saying that Morph's ability to both all of a sudden have a penis or not have a penis, all of a sudden to have ovaries or not have ovaries, all of a sudden to have a womb or not have a womb, none of that really changes the fact that you say that Morph's stays a man the whole time interesting well i'm glad that you've grown congratulations on your great awakenings I i'm glad you're no longer biological essentialists it's no longer prostate maketh the man yes without prostate there is no man oh for heaven's sake and eventually the backlash to that post got so bad that the people who run this account which again is just a fan account it's not an official account they actually went ahead and locked replies and then of course proceeded to call yeah, well, I wonder why this keeps happening. Why Why would that ever happen? Why Why would suddenly a whole bunch of people start jumping into the replies, being like, Fuck it, I'll drop! <laughs> I'm angry! Someone needs to know! Running and writing X-Men 96. The beautiful thing, too, about, like, just having a massive property where that is basically at the core of its central theme, like, the, the, there is no X-Men in the series if there isn't this dynamic of a group of people who are being ostracized generally from broader society, and then that broader society taking steps, you might even say fascist steps, and utilizing, again, structural power, power of the state, to try and forcibly eliminate them, and then a resistance movement to that, and then two different factions within that resistance movement, one being that there should be a harmonious, eventual acceptance of both mutants and humans and they can live in peace together so say Charles Xavier and then of course you have Magneto who wants a violent revolution to be able to uh, destroy all of the humans so that mutant kind can now ascend uh, as the uh, you know rightful heirs to evolution that's that's this this is all central to, to the entirety of the X-Men and then to just say well you remember the 90s you know when there wasn't messages themes arcs plots politics in everything when you could just have fun you know you just go you watch an x-men movie and it was basically it's about like i don't know the metal skeleton man and then the magnets man and then he was like does that beautiful metal run throughout your body even into your penis and then goes like that and then he's like ah i can't move that was that was fun you all remember that right Seven, the show, they included this Stan Lee quote as if to try to make some point. I wanted them to be diverse. The whole underlying principle of the X-Men was to try to be an anti-bigotry story to show there's good in every person. Okay, so basically the activist fans out there, including the people behind this account, they're trying to make the argument that if you're not okay with Morph being non-binary in X-Men 97, then you're basically a bigot who never understood the premise of the X-Men in the first place, which was supposed to be inclusion and acceptance. And to that, I have to say, first off, regardless of what your opinions on being non-binary actually are, Morph is a character who previously has existed in the X-Men universe. And no, he was never non-binary before this. As Mounting Into Comics explains in one of their articles, born at Kevin Sidney, the mutant known as Morph, as his name implies, possessed the mutant gift of cellular level shapeshifting. And of course, throughout his adventures, both in print and animated, Morph has never been portrayed as considering himself non-binary. While his ability does allow him to shift into any form, including that of a woman at the biological level he always oh no oh no caught in the trap that you doth have set <laughs> 
Well, I mean, it's official. The right has now rejected biological essentialism. They got there. It took a while. A weird entry. A weird entry point, I might add. It wasn't the way or the like trajectory I thought the Great Awakening would take place. But the woke mind virus is winning, kicking ass right now, you know, just permeating brains and, and, and awakening people in, in ways they never thought possible. And then here we are. He's defaulted to a standard appearance as a relatively nondescript human male. And as other people brought up in response to this new non-binary version of Morph, previous versions of the character, like this one from 1997, I mean, they show him clearly just being a regular guy. This is not a spoiler uh, for the series, by the way. They also uh, have this version of Morph in the modern cartoon, as in Morph it suddenly hasn't changed to perpetually. Uh, this is like, you know, uh, this this person was not erased, or this version of Morph was not erased. Morph turns into this version to go clurbin at the clurb. I mean, politics aside, social messaging aside, if you are a fan who doesn't like this new version of Morph, I don't think that automatically makes you a bigot for noting that, hey, you guys are departing from the source material for what seed. But so Morph can turn into that. Morph does turn into the, you get the nostalgia too. So then, yeah, I, I don't know if it's immediately that you're a bigot if you're just like, I want things to be the way they always were. Um, but you'll be able to watch it and then enjoy. And, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to take away from the, the experience. It's like ideological reasons. And from a social standpoint, the idea that if you don't like non-binary morph, then you're a bigot who goes against what the X-Men really stand for. The X-Men stand for accepting everybody regardless of differences, okay? Stanley has made that clear. I don't think Stanley was the type of person who put message before character in that he was actually <laughs> a... <laughs> Got him. Well, even if that's the case, how does that change? This is clearly the point of the series. <laughs> Like, why not just make a show that's basically 25 minutes of explosions? Just that. You, you get what you want, finally. It's apolitical. I mean, hopefully they don't show you what's exploding. Okay, so you don't even get to see what's exploding. It just cuts to the explosion itself and, and neat lights and sounds. And, and then you can just watch that for 25 minutes. Completely apolitical. Ah, oh, it's not woke as fuck. Not, not heavy-handed on the plot or anything. A good writer, but yes, the X-Men as a concept, there's always been the message of inclusion there. But the idea of a non-binary character doesn't really fit into that, if you ask me, How? because the point of the X-Men is treat everybody the same regardless of their differences. But when it comes to non-binary people, it's not treat everyone the same regardless of their differences. It's that society is treating different people differently for the way they were born. It's more like they are the same as everybody else, but they want to be treated differently, if that makes sense. Like the entire premise of a non-binary gender identity is actually trying to make something that is really essentially the same as everyone else into a different category, which is the opposite of the X-Men's messaging of taking actual different categories like race or sexuality and treating Wow, this this little like two minute blurb needs to be studied. I, I I think you could point out an entire like you could do an entire graph of the amount of pretzeling you got to do with your brain in order to make this all work, right? Okay, so I can't straight up say that this wasn't part of it, but I don't want to say fully what exactly the message was. And then I also want to imply that Stanley basically put characters first. So what's more important is the shiny explosions and stuff like that. But at the same time, being non-binary specifically makes you want to be different than everybody else. So you're in a third category. So it's not about treating people the same, even though this wouldn't be the same thing because it's how you are treated and how people are treating you is the problem that the X-Men is actually identifying. But at the same time, like, yeah, okay, we got there, I guess. Them all the same. So no, it doesn't make sense. And by the way, I'll show you uh, the trailer for the new series just so you can, you can see for one second. Watch the series finale of X-Men next Saturday morning. Check your local listings. I'm grateful to have the chance to say goodbye. I am. Lauren Chen is actually in the trailer. I'm going to show you where. Proud of you all, my X-Men. Fate lies in our hands now. 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 We have to stay vigilant. The professor entrusted us with his dream. Right, right here. This, so the, the, there's representation of all of the right wing chuds, all of them. This, so this is this is you. This is this is who you are represented by in, in the series. Again, I know uh, politics in my stories. 
but uh, the, the, so this the, this is the right to the far right. That's that's yeah. Again, it's uh, oof, yeah, really hard to decipher the codes. Really, really hard to get at what they're trying to say here. You know, boy, it's a mystery. Uh, the other thing that people are really, really mad at, and hold on, I want to pull up uh, a video made by a very funny comedian. Uh, they're very mad also at the fact that in the new episode, in the pilot, Gambit wears what I believe is a cutoff t-shirt. There's probably a more formal name. Uh, some people have said crop top. Uh, this this uh, uh, look right here. Uh, they're saying that it's super gay. Yeah, super, super gay. Like, he wasn't this gay. No one dressed like this in the 90s, that's for sure. You know, I guess that like every punk band ever is is gay by by definition. So yeah, I, the internet. This was a look. This was just, this is how people dressed in the nineties. <laughs> I mean, you can criticize the fashion. It doesn't immediately imply gay, right? Like it just like seriously. One of those things. And again, when you wake up in the morning and, and say you're just staying home for the afternoon, you know, you're going to take your time, spend maybe an extra hour in bed before you get up, and then you're going to be real lazy about. And are you going to put on your finest garments? Probably not. Probably going to throw on some sweatpants. Might throw this on, you know, it's not 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 that big of a deal. Not something you really got to gotta think about a bunch, you know, try and crack the code. Um, but... Uh, this is just uh, probably the most epic of rants uh, that anyone could have given on uh, the X-Men topic and the culture wars. All of social media is full of men in their mid-40s with bad beards complaining that X-Men 97 made Gambit kind of gay because he wore a crop top in one episode? Do I need to remind you guys who the fuck Gambit was in 1996? This is an actual Gambit action figure. Look at this. He is dressed as bisexual lighting. He has flair on his fucking leggings. This is a man wearing fingerless gloves. You think fingerless <laughs> gloves are straight? You need to go to therapy right now, okay? This man is a Cajun thief who lives in a swamp who has a girlfriend he can't touch because if he does, he'll die, okay? That is a bisexual man at best. Oh, I, mean, I would definitely slay that pussy. But if I touch you, I would lose all my powers. His powers are turning things hot pink and then they explode. He was designed to make you want to kiss a man, okay? He's always been gay. It's not the shirt. Uh, Pearlmania 500. At Pearlmania 500. If you wanna, if you wanna go support <laughs> that masterpiece, honestly, I, I think I think like the, the discourse is over. Okay, there's there's nothing more. That's it's over. It took, it took less than less than 60 seconds. If we add the little TikTok tie-in, uh, go go check out at Pearlmania 500. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We first want to give a shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. This program is produced thanks to the generous support of our Patreon supporters. Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hegbar Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multi Mondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quite 185, Richard Bomey, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, and Words Greenwood. As well as every other person you see on the screen right now, this show would not be possible without them. And if you want to join these wonderful people who make this entire program possible, simply go to patreon.com slash the service and you can unlock uncensored and bonus episodes and, you know, help us exist.